Time to trigger some people. Welcome back to Kenji Martial Arts. Now, if you've read the title and you still want to watch this video, good for you. If not, then you're lost. Believe it or not, but karateka and karate practice are not perfect. I know, it's truly shocking. How could people who dedicate hundreds upon hundreds of hours to an art with hundreds and hundreds of years of history whilst wearing angry training pajamas be doing anything wrong. Well that's the point. Karate has always evolved over time by changing and adjusting the art to suit the needs of the practitioner. So there's no such thing as a final form for karate. It's only ever survived by looking where it's at and evolving. So let's look at some common mistakes made by karateka. Number one, and you all knew this one was coming, incorrect use of hikite. Hikite is meant to mean pulling hand, that you grapple with one hand, pull, and you strike with the other hand. Never have a dead hand. Arts like boxing, judo, wrestling, BJJ, always use two hands at the same time to execute techniques. Why on earth don't karateka do the same? Why do some people think that one arm is enough? You aren't future Gohan. You've got two arms. Use them. Someone online the other day told me that they use Hikate to make sure that their hips are in the right alignment. You don't need to put your hand on your hip to make sure it's in the right position. You aren't doing the Macarena. My solution is, I'm just going to change it. It is no longer called the pulling hand. No, I officially decree it is now called the grappling hand. I honestly don't care about the official translation. If it makes sense, it's not stupid. Calling it the grappling hand will also alter people's perception of what it actually does. So I'm changing it, don't care. Grapple with one hand, cause damage with the other hand. Number two. Karateka always seem to be obsessed with doing everything in a direct straight line, be it sparring, key on, or even lining up at the start of the session. They train that way, but the funny thing is, moving off the center line and attacking from an angle or a blind spot is found all over kata. Just look at the intro to Hian Shodan or Gekisai Daichi. First thing you do is take an angle off the line of fire. Move out of the way and have more of your weapons facing the target than they're facing yours. The solution here is simple. Take the bunkai or the sparring that you normally practice and implement getting offline out of the way and attacking from a much more advantageous position. See how much more effective it can actually be. Number three, encouraging deeper and longer stances that result in far too many injuries. Karateka always encourage stances to be deep and long, with the pretext that it helps to increase leg strength. The thing is though, it doesn't. Strength training and conditioning will help increase leg strength. Do some squats, simple. This is just in practical yoga. Twisting your back knee for a reverse punch is why so many karateka end up with knee injuries. Knees are meant to bend, not twist. Now the solution here is to make sure that stances are not too long, shortened, they're not too taxing, don't leave you unbalanced, don't hurt you, and they leave you to be able to move into other stances smoothly and easily. If it hurts, don't do it. I've completely dropped Kibadachi, the horse stance, from my own training. It just gets too uncomfortable and it will lead to injuries if I keep it up. Number four are high kicks. As someone who comes from a Taekwondo background, I can safely say it's much more effective to kick the torso when sparring, but for self-protection, anything below the waist is fair game. Kicking too high ri risks too much instability, and if you miss or get caught in a grapple, 
you're gonna have a bad time. I think I heard on a Ian Abernethy podcast that kicking to the head makes as much sense as trying to punch someone in the shin. Very wise words. Number five is focusing too much on aesthetics and posing with no practical value. Let's imagine someone tries to attack you. You try to implement the flashy bunkai that you've drilled a hundred times over in a very sterile dojo environment. But uh uh-oh, too late. You've been sparked in the jaw, you're on the ground knocked out, then you wake up at an amusement park a few days later with a bag of baked potatoes. Damn, that was a really weird weekend. It pays to break the stiff forms that you normally drill and prepare them for habitual acts of violence. Have drills using headgear, higher contacts, and scenario training. Safely, of course, under the guidance of, of a proper instructor. I'll link down below a list of habitual acts of violence. It's definitely worth having a look through. Now, thanks for sticking through this list if you've made it to the end. I know this is gonna piss some people off, or at least I hope it does. But if we can't accept that some things need to improve with karate to be better and more pragmatic, then the art won't evolve, which is what kept it alive in the first place. Anyway, that's all from me for today. So if you could please drop a like, comment, any questions or things you'd like to see on this channel, subscribe, hit me up on Insta, and of course, I wish you all the best with your training. Take care.